I'm Sunita Narayan and this I'm is Madhu. I'm Madhu Sudan. Uh, we are both here at the Anil Agarwal Dialogue and we're here to discuss with you some of the big issues that are emerging out of the State of Forest report that came out recently. Um, we believe that forests are critical. We know that. I don't have to espouse on why we need forests. The question is, what is happening to our forests? Do we know enough about it? And what do we need to do? And I think that's really where Madhu and I agree and disagree, maybe on some of the strategies. But we all, we both agree very, very much that we need to discuss this. Now, let me start with talking about an analysis that I have done recently on the State of Forest Report. Essentially, my analysis shows that, the, that India's Forest cover, and I'm using the word very carefully, forest cover, that is forests that are that there are growing outside the forest land rather than inside the land which is owned by the forest department. The second thing that I have found is that there is a what I'm calling the missing forest, that there is land which is owned by the forest department under control. Let me use the word under control because ownership after all is not with the forest department. They hold it in trust. This is public land. This is common land. But forest department is in control of 77.7 million hectares of India's geographical area. But the forest cover data that is there in the State of Forest Report is only for 51 million hectares, 51.6 million hectares or so. So the question that I am asking is, where is this missing land? The land which is held by the forest department versus the land on which there is a forest cover. And this is one question that I think is important for us to understand because if that land really exists and it is scrub land or degraded land, we need to talk about how that land needs to be regenerated. If the land doesn't exist, if it has been encroached upon, if it has gone into settlements, we need to take it out of the forest uh, uh, ownership. So I think the question is really as we move forward, to get better data, better understanding of what is forest. Madhu, your analysis has really taken, taken, you know, it, 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 it's very fascinating of the same report. Can you talk about it a little? I think one of the things that uh, we are using, have been using for over three decades now, is the uh, is forest cover. We have been using remotely sensed satellite imagery to help us assess over very large scales what is and what is not a forest. By and large, we take it to be very obvious to all of us what a forest is. But when you are undertaking an exercise of this magnitude across a, 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 such a large scale, it becomes extremely important for you also to have definitions that will lead you to what you would like to know yes. about uh, the forest. So, to cut to what the results of the last 35 mm. years of looking back tell us, basically, there is a period over which nothing terribly interesting happens to the forest. There is a small amount of decline. And all of a sudden, there is a huge increase in forest cover in our country. In what, between one set of consecutive assessment, it's an increase in, the, uh, in area equivalent to the area of Kerala state. Wow. And across the entire last 20 years, it is an increase that is greater than the entire extent of our tiger reserves put together. It's about 80,000 square kilometers over which our forests have increased. The question that this begs is, if you talk to a conservationist, they are, the conservationists, they are saying forests are getting enclosed, they are getting degraded, we are losing forests, they are being diverted. So, that is one narrative. If you are asking communities, they, are say, they say that it's being diverted to uh, commercial and industrial and all other kinds of things that, uh, that marginalize them. So, in all of this, there's clearly a lot of dips being put on our forests and, and, and forests. It suggests that forests seem to be being used for other things. Yeah. Yet our forests are increasing by 80,000 square kilometers. So what is going on? So when you look a little closer, yeah. which is a process, unfortunately, 
handicapped hugely by the lack of data that is made publicly available about a public resource like forest. I happened to find uh, uh, a map of the FSI that is being served by a Government of India mm. website that allows us to get a glimpse at what they're calling for us mm. and that is what leads to very troubling discoveries about what the definitions have always been in the open. Yeah. But when you operationalize That's a definition true. and put it out yeah. to see on a map, yeah. you start to see areas that are tea estates, coconut plantations, yeah. oil palm, even areas that are densely settled, ag ag urban aggregations, thoroughfares in large yeah. metros, housing estates, everything yeah. comes into a definition of a forest, not just open forest, yeah. but moderately dense and very dense yeah. forest as well. How do you then describe if, a, if an oil palm plantation yeah. or, a tea, uh, or, or a tea estate that replaces a forest is also going to be a forest, what does deforestation even then mean? Absolutely. It's, it, it's gone from the vocabulary. Absolutely. So, I think what, to summarize a, a, a whole set of complex things, what we actually see is that a very wide variety of human modified environments with tree cover are now being categorized as forests. Nothing wrong with including their and acknowledging their value. Absolutely. But a natural forest is completely different, different from what any human with any amount of technology or knowledge or learning can put in a place of a real forest. Absolutely. And that distinction has to be part of every assessment we are making, which it isn't. So, you know, Madhu, this is so important because at the end of the day, if we want, I mean, it's all, all about forests, but it's all about the multiple users of forests. Okay. Now, and each use has to be respected. I mean, I think that's where the conversation is getting so distorted because if you mix a naturally, naturally regenerated forest, a biodiversity dense forest, in the same definition as you would a plantation, then both the plantation gets a bad name as well as the fact that that naturally regenerated forest gets devalued. Yes. Okay. So, what we really, and, and, and it, I think what you have really touched upon is, you know, also when I looked at the analysis of the report, this came out so clearly that, you know, the, the land under the forest department has remained the same. The forest cover under the forest department has now become less or it is now 51 million hectares. And the forest area, which has remained the same, the forest cover has remained the same from 1987 to now. Okay. It's about 70 million hectares. It's about 21 to 22 percent of the country's land area. So that. It's increased. It's, it's increased. marginally increased. 80,000 square kilometers. Uh, but like that may have increased over some point in the years. Right now, for the last some years, the number has remained about 20 million hectares. I mean, sorry, 21 percent of India's geographical area. It's, when it's gone from 21 to approximately 24. So it's You're right. You're right. Absolutely. It's gone to 24 because of the fact that you also then so are including. No, absolutely. 640,000 yeah. square kilometers. Now it's around 730. Absolutely, Madhu. But then I'm, what I had not included in that was what was also defined as trees outside forest. No, I'm not including You're not including that. Not that. Including. Okay. Yeah. So what you're saying is it's gone up to 24 without trees um, under yes. forest. You're up, you, you would be right about it. But what the difference is that that area is actually outside the recorded forest area, the growth of it, most of the growth of it, as I have found. But you're saying that some of it is also within the recorded forest area. That's not possible to say with the data or the reports. That alone. we have. But it's okay. because it's aggregated in a way that doesn't allow you to uh, separate these. Separate these out. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. But what we are both agreeing to is the fact that there is clearly a definitional issue here. Because the current definition that the, that the, that is there in the State of Forest Report says that any land, and it's a simple definition, any land, any land, yeah. regardless of ownership, regardless of land use type, any land which has tree cover of 10% canopy or above in any one hectare of land is classified as forest. Now that then allows for this 
use of a tree plantation or a mango or a coconut plantation or any other plantation or even a teak plantation to come into this definition. Now, in your understanding of the FAO definition, from where some of this has come from, you're saying that that actually is much more, it's not as simple as this. You can't just take a cut off at 10% and say, this is now a forest. Yeah. So what is the FAO definition? My understanding of the FAO definition is that it talks about areas with a canopy cover of 10% or more that extend at least over a hectare, okay. which is not the same as saying 10% of a hectare with trees. It is not the same. Fascinating. So if, so if, you, hold, if, you, hold, ah. if you hold a device called a canopy densiometer, yes. you can read out of it what the canopy cover is there, is above you. So in an area that uh, is at least a hectare, yes. you, uh, your canopy says, cover FAO has says, to be at least 10%. The FAO says half a hectare. Okay. In an area that's at least half, half a hectare, hectare, you should have tree covers where the readout would be at least 10% in that in that stretch. It is not saying if you have a bunch of trees in 10% of that half hectare, it, it can be counted as forest. That is my understanding of the FAO definition. But it goes even further. It specifies a minimum stature that the trees on that should attain at maturity, which would qualify them to be forest. The, uh, the other thing that it does is also exclusions. So if you use this definition of 10% yeah. of yeah. uh, uh, canopy cover, yeah. half hectare yeah. or one hectare as the case may be, and uh, a tree stage or a tree height, you could in include a lot of agroforestry areas and urban areas you which do. are clearly not forest. You so it, it excludes that. Yeah. Where countries are able, they, they give a band after that. Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about is what FAO yeah. originally comes up with. Then they give a band. So India there, it's a completely separate document. This 15% canopy cover is what we pick. 0.05% of a hectare is the threshold that we will have. And 2 meters is this height cutoff that we have specified. That's so they have mean. done that in the UNFCC document. There, there, is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a submission from India. The definition being put out by FSI is more similar to what yeah. you are understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So you have included T in it because you have defined it as any one hectare yeah. which has 10% trees, yes. tree cover. Yeah. They have not used 10% canopy cover, tree cover. Tree canopy cover. Tree yeah. canopy cover is yeah. the technical word that they have used. Yeah. Now what you are saying is a completely different, you are saying, number one you are saying, the definition says that those trees have to be for forestry purposes, which is for timber purposes. If okay? you follow the FAO If you take the FAO definition, which also would actually bring more integrity yes. to the way that you would be able to understand what are the forests that you have. Yeah. Okay. You could have a plantation, yeah. no harm in it, but you would then distinguish a forest plantation from a naturally growing forest. Yeah. Because you would then from have agroforestry. from agroforestry, yeah. from urban forestry. Yes. I mean, today, Madhu, the big problem that I live in Delhi, the biggest problem that is coming in Delhi is that people don't want trees to grow beyond a particular girth yeah. because any tree that becomes bigger becomes a sapling that becomes a tree becomes then an impossible job to cut yeah. because under the tree act you then need permission from the lg which you don't get and there is you know so we are making we are really confusing the wood from the trees in some senses here yeah. and we are making forestry into a much more not just contested issue but as you are and i what i'm hearing from you is the most important thing that you're saying is if you don't get your definition right then you could think that you're growing forests, but you're not growing forests. You're actually deforesting your forests and you're, you're counting trees as forests. Yeah. And therefore you believe it's all hunky-dory. Yeah. I think what is really 
needed as a way forward is that one needs to take this apart so when what are we measuring for us yeah. for yeah. i think what point. what what are our objectives for measuring for us yeah. so presumably protection of forests yeah. is one uh, one reason yeah. presumably production from these lands is another yeah. reason yeah. maybe there are cultural reasons there are ecological reasons that are functional yeah. in terms of ecological function yeah. and yeah. services so now pursuing each of those goals yeah. needs clarity yeah. so if you are going to call a tea estate or someone's a horticultural plantation of forest tomorrow are you going to prevent them from cutting things they planted that's Priority. what's happening exactly. that's what's happening exactly. i plant a mango tree on my farm as a way to be able to eat mangoes while the tree is productive and then to be able to cut the tree yeah. is a nightmare today yeah okay you have made tree planting a cr- tree tree felling a crime and therefore tree planting has become something that people risk. do at a risk yeah. okay i think we also need to look at the the, the counterpoint to this, which is that while it has become hard for people who plant trees on private lands to, in on under horticultural crops to cut them yeah. it may become easier, easier to give away natural forests point uh, if you are going to say oh we have added some forest we added some forest here no so we've actually not lost forest absolutely. don't worry absolutely. so whereas who would go around explaining to a gibbon huh. that used to swing from those yeah. trees and feed on the yeah. fruit there which has been converted into a tea estate yeah. who's going to gain, uh, explain to that gibbon yeah. about the forest that has been lost permanently it's not about the state of forest it's really about the need for us as a country to take very strong steps to be able to protect the forest we have to be able to value the forest we have and to be able to grow the forest we don't have yeah. but to be able to do both yeah. we need to know what's a forest yeah. what's a plantation yeah. what's an orchard yeah. what's a coconut plantation and then to be able to use that understanding totally. that disaggregated understanding that that mapping yeah. to be able to say this is my most important forest for biodiversity reasons yeah. i cannot lose it yeah. and i if i lose it i cannot call it i cannot substitute it with the plantation yes. and i think it's so important what you have done and i think i hope that this conversation of ours will help to really take forward the forest agenda because in my view and this is really what i had also said in my uh, analysis is not only is this land missing but for me the forest agenda has to evolve now so not all forests need to be protected we are buying huge amount of imported wood today we need to grow the wood but we cannot grow the wood if we don't know if we are growing the wood in plantation areas where wood should be grown or whether we are replacing natural forest to grow the wood we should not happen. we should not happen okay so i think the the your analysis really helps to sharpen the fact that if you want to move ahead yes. if you want to have a more um, progressive forest policy which can help india meet its economic needs meet the livelihood needs of people then the definitional issues and the disaggregation of the data so that you know what is the forest and you don't miss the trees for the wood yeah. and i think that so thank you very much it's been an, i think you know extraordinary work and i really hope madhu that your work will help to take this conversation forward we I have hope so to too. i you. hope so no we will be at it so thank you very much